Hey there, Sean here. I wanted to do a review this week of The Untouchables. Now before I get to my review, I just want to say uh, as a proviso that please don't be concerned if I don't seem to be looking at the camera properly or there seem to be glitches in the sound. I'm doing a very interesting process today, recording this video again unedited, unscripted, and first take like all of my film reviews on my iPhone as opposed to on my computer where iMovie doesn't seem to be working. Though this review is still of The Untouchables, it might have a couple flaws that were require the review to be untouchable on the web properly, so forgive that pun and let's get to The Untouchables. Now The Untouchables is currently the most successful French film in the world, and uh, not just in, a, in its box office. It also was ranked on IMDb as one of the highest rated films ever made, and even though it was only made in 2011 by uh, Olivier Nakach and Eric Toledano, and forgive any mispronunciations of those French directors' names, I should mention that uh, the film stars Francois Clouzet as Philippe, a quadriplegic whose uh, new assistant, played by Omar Sy, named Driss as a nickname for something else, I assume, uh, tries to help him get out of his emotional and psychological funk that comes with being a paralyzed, multi-billionaire, quadriplegic art critic and musician. Now, The Untouchables has been one of the most successful films critically as well, touching the hearts of people all over the world, and being France's submission to the Academy Awards this year, not only for Best Foreign Language Film, but also for Best Picture, where they're hoping to get a big run out of this film, which seems to be touching people's hearts. Now, I saw The Untouchables a couple weeks ago with my friend Aaron Winkler, when it opened in San Francisco. And I have to say that its reputation precedes it. People recognize it as not only a film about disabilities, much like Ben Lewin's The Sessions, which I recently reviewed, but also uh, Jim Sheridan's My Left Foot, in which Daniel Day-Lewis had to fight through cerebral palsy to win an Academy Award for Best Actor. And while Francois Clouzet's performance here as Philippe uh, is more quiet and subtle and not quite the focus of the film rather than Driss in size performance, I will say that the uh, creation and the attention to disability in The Untouchables is far more impressive and a bit more, not severe exactly, but um, mechanical, medical, uh, personified in medicinal and doctoral techniques. How do I explain this? I should just say that The Untouchables, while it's not a procedural or a medical drama, does deal with the actual emotional roundabouts of being someone with paralysis, rather than someone who uses their paralysis as a springboard for an idea. Since the focus is not on the man with with quadriplegia here, but rather on Driss, The Untouchables takes a subverted perspective not only on the idea of having a white protagonist, which is substituted by Omar Sy, who, while I don't know his uh, ethnic background, is a French actor of color, and takes his performance as Driss and centralizes it in a way that most mainstream film does not. For that reason, The Untouchables has been hailed by critics and by audiences alike as a particularly unique picture, when actually, for me, in terms of its filmographic style, it represents a sort of a play-by-play -play version of any comedy or comic drama about a man with their disability. Now, that's not to say that The Untouchables isn't a deeply humanistic film, but Toledano and Nakach, outside of their incredible casting, have created a film that takes his takes its wit and its pleasure in the use of exchange between Philip and Driss, rather than taking its pleasure in deep, humanistic, uh, drama. Now, the film does fill itself with pathos, but some of it feels trite or melodramatic. There are scenes in which Driss starts dancing in front of Philippe while he's caretaking him, and Philippe, obviously unable to move, feels sad. So how does Philippe, who can't move his legs and dance with Driss, pay Driss back? Well, they go skydiving, and Driss, who is a poor, uh, nearly homeless citizen in France, ends up being swept off his feet by the glamour and the wealth and the uh, total, you know, happy-go-lucky attitude of this man with his disability. The Untouchables, if I had to give it a rank of some kind, might not be one of the best films of all time because of this trite attitude that comes uh, dramatically with the territory of uh, disability, homelessness, issues and disparities in France between people of color and uh, white wealthy critics of some kind, the intelligentsia versus uh, the lower than bourgeois working or blue collar class of France is a major subject of the Untouchables. Toledano and Nakach, who also wrote the script here, show themselves to be excellent directors of 
pathos filled, uh, you know, witty, scripted, dialogue heavy, plot heavy conceptualization. They could have made a film like uh, Armando Iannucci's In the Loop from 2009, and yet, even though the styles between that film and this are not the same, that film being a mockumentary, this film being closest in elements to a, uh, a character study or a melodrama, though those two things don't seem compatible, the taking of their own screenplay to create a deeply ensemble-filled, uh, attention-filled, you know, slightly medical, terminological attention to human quality melodrama makes The Untouchables a special kind of film. No, I wouldn't say that it's a unique film in the way that it creates ideas, but it does bring up issues. I think that, to me, the most valuable uh, reminiscent quality of The Untouchables is 1993's Philadelphia, Jonathan Demme's film about AIDS that starred Tom Hanks. Now, that was not the first film to show attention to AIDS, nor is this film the first attention, uh, the first film to show attention critically to um, disparities between the upper and lower classes of France, and especially between people of color and the white class of, of uh, bourgeois Paris. But what Philadelphia did that was incredible is take recognizable and absolutely beautiful actors, in the case of Antonio Banderas, Tom Hanks, and Denzel Washington, and use them to create a social issue that subverts, you know, Hollywood techniques, the typical trite melodramatic story that seems to be similarly present in The Untouchables, and uses these stars to create an actually subverted discussion about those themes. Now, in that way, Philadelphia has been hailed as a seminal film in queer filmmaking or about AIDS filmmaking and brought that disease to the fore of American critical and artistic study. Similarly, The Untouchables is probably the most significant French social issue film that I've seen in many years. Now, while it's not as impactful to me as uh, the French language film Amour, Michael Haneke's film this year, which also has issues to do with social disparity, grief, dealing with mortality, similarly to Francois Clouzet's character, The Untouchables takes these stars and its melodramatic identity and actually subverts the class drama that it seems to be or appears to be and has made it so popular. That being said, one of the things that is more important than Toledano and Nakache's sturdy direction are the two central and excellent performances by Omar Sy as Dries and Francois Clouzet as a man relegated to a, a handicap. Now Clouzet, who got his start many years ago and has become a Parisian legend, has recently come to my attention as the star of films like Tell No One, Guillaume Canet's excellent thriller from 2006. But here, as Philippe, he brings such a wonderfully quiet, massive dignity to his role, sometimes going between the stuck-up critical artiste and the uh, musical avant-garde supportist, uh, or the, you know, the tongue-in-cheek, cigarette-smoking, ne'er-do-well that is Philippe's younger sense. Omar Sy, similarly as Driss, takes what we expect a typical character and brings deep, empathetic uh, value to his character. Sy's face is just so incredibly versatile and beautiful. He really is a magnificent person to look at, and the camera seems to love his smile, his brightness, his joy. When he flirts with other women, and not just because he's six foot ten and very handsome, to see Omar Sy on camera is to see a born superstar. He has a suaveness and an energy that not many people really can have in front of the camera, and he's a born mega Hollywood actor. Now, even though The Untouchables is not a Hollywood film, it is being released in the United States significantly. Here in San Francisco, it's been out for two weeks, to much acclaim, and as I mentioned, it is France's most financially successful film ever. Should you see The Untouchables? Certainly it's going to be a part of film history in the next couple of years and is going to set the tone emotionally for how Hollywood wants films like Judd Apatow's Funny People or James L. Brooks-type comedy like Terms of Endearment to come to the fore of American cinema. The Untouchables not only takes the social issues of Paris and excellent performances by Francois Clouzet and Omar Sy, but also takes good direction and a James L. Brooksian-type comedic identity and brings it to the fore of the film. You should see Untouchables, and thank you, Aaron Winkler, for coming with me. Hope this review, which was shot on an iPhone, seems to do okay. All the best.